There's nothing less interesting to me than a Western other than a Western from fucking Australia. Can't think of anything <laughs> less interesting to me. Dan just pissed off 25 million people. Good luck, man. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I mean, listen, I don't have a big love for Australia anyway. They got fucking everything yeah. there wants to kill you. Snakes, spiders, fucking kangaroos, all sorts <laughs> of crazy shit. I've seen some fucking videos of spiders on just people's walls where they're like, oh shit, it's a fucking huntsman. I'd be fucking out of that fucking like Daffy Duck through the fucking wall. <laughs> He had only one wish, to prove himself a man. Make your plan with someone else's daughter. I didn't carve this place out of the bush to see Jessica run off with the first fortune hunter to come along. This is a, the story of Jim Craig, a young man whose father dies in the 1800s, late 1800s in Australia. They're mountain people. After his father dies, he takes a job at the Harrison Cattle Ranch, where he's forced to become a man. This is directed by George Miller. Not to be confused with George Miller of Mad Max fame. Also Happy Feet, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> and it's funny because when I looked this movie up when you first talked, when you first said this is what we're going to be watching, I was like, oh, it's George Miller? Okay, this might be good. Got him. Three minutes in, I'm like, no, no, no. This is for sure not the same George Miller. So all that being said, just, just as a, just to let you know, I am historically not a Western movie fan, with the exception of a few of them. But I don't really even like the Westerns that are like the world famous ones, like fucking Tombstone and like, uh, you know, all these movies. I've seen them, just not a huge Western fan. Matter of fact, my favorite Western, I don't even know if you would have heard of this. It's, it's a Western horror movie called Bone Tomahawk with Kurt Russell. Amazing <clears throat> fucking movie. Yes. Have you seen that? Of course I have. Okay, good. So that's sort of my thing. Dusty. Why did you pick this movie? Let's get into it. What do you like? You, no, well, you, uh, well, no, you're no, the no, one no, familiar no, with no, it, so no, no. take the lead. Correct. I, I should have done the opening, but I wanted to hear <laughs> you do it, because uh, I'm going to correct it all after. I actually want to hear takes, and then we'll discuss the film and why I selected it. Okay. So tell me what you thought about it, and then I'll explain some things to you, and you can think about it while I'm explaining it, and we could talk about it, and maybe you'll change Let's your go. mind. Maybe you won't, but I want to hear your takes first. Marvin, you start. And him. Marvin, okay. you go first. I I actually enjoyed this. Good. I thought the music was really good. I wouldn't call it boring. I don't know what I would call it. Like It's something about Westerns where, for me, it's just something that you could just enjoy. Bruce Wollen won uh, Best Original Music Score. A couple awards for this music score, by the way, Marvin. So, mm. yeah. Okay, okay. I, I, I enjoyed it. I, I guess I like westerns. I'm glad you liked it. She had only one dream, to find out who she was. Why do you keep this portrait of my mother? For me, again, just don't really like westerns. However, <laughs> I like practically nothing about this movie. Um, <laughs> there was, and this isn't me just being a dick. Like, I really, I was watching it with an open mind. It's just, in the wow. first, the acting was just really fucking bad, in my opinion. Uh, especially from pretty much everybody other than Kirk Douglas was pretty right, fucking awful. Yeah, was pretty awful in this movie. In fact, fu real quick, speaking of Kirk Douglas, it's amazing to me that if you just closed your eyes, how much almost identically him and Michael, Michael Douglas sound. His son. Yeah. Almost identical voices. Anyway, mm -hmm. Kirk Douglas was really the only one who was good in this movie, and he wasn't even good in this movie at times. <laughs> so... I was really quickly taken out of it right from the beginning. Uh, you know, father dies and you get the no. Oh yeah, that was that was super cheesy. So coupled with but like, it is an '80s movie. Yeah, which but I it's mean, prone to have some cheese. Westerns aren't they aren't uh, excluded from the cheese of the '80s. Well, as we've talked about with '80s movies, we've covered plenty of them here on the on the podcast so far, and you typically have issues with the cheesiness of them. No, no, no. Or the CGI I have issues stuff. with the C the graphics the and the way these things look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. All right. So that some, you know, there's But real quick. Go ahead. Real quick. Yeah, yeah. You talked about the acting. I did. Yeah. Uh, yep. Not a fan. I don't know if I should say this. What are you going to say? Don't fucking bring up Halloween, Marvin. No, 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 no. Okay. I'm not going to bring up Halloween. All right. But I am going to bring up another Do it. movie. Hit me with it. <sighs> Making me nervous. Star Wars. No, I'll agree with a, you. I, I feel like, yeah, Star no, Wars doesn't have the best acting either. Not at all. No, not at all. Okay. No, fucking what's his name? I've said it many times. Fucking what's his name? Other than his voice acting, he's like <laughs> not a good actor at all. And and Carrie Russell, um, Carrie, did I just call her? 
What did I just say? Gary Carrie, Russell. Carrie Fisher. I need to go to the hospital after this. <laughs> you said Kurt Russell earlier. I did. Yeah, so. yeah. Oh. Okay, no. thank you. You made me feel better. I was real nervous for a That's, second. That makes more <laughs> Carrie Fisher, she really didn't... I mean, she's also really not a great actress. Like, later in her life, I think, when she did more serious roles and stuff, I feel like she kind of came into her a little bit. But yeah, no, Star Wars does she not have... amazing in Blue Okay, Spiders. I just wanted to yeah. say that. No, no, I agree okay. with you. 100%. Only good actor in Star Wars, really? Alec Guinness? And like, you know, Darth Vader fucking yeah, <laughs> like, but that's a voiceover. So it's like, you know, right. Uh, but yeah, no, I agree. I thought Jim was, I like Jim. I yeah. was rooting for Jim. Tom I enjoyed him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this was like one of his first, I think, movies. And he didn't really have any writing experience at all. Um, and actually just went on to make some other horse movies. And that was about it. Like he didn't <laughs> really do a whole lot with his career. He did went on to make a sequel because this movie was successful enough that it got a big budget sequel. Guy really got into that, that horse niche. niche. There was a lawsuit <laughs> from Kirk Douglas about the first one. Cause he didn't think he was getting paid enough. Mm. Cause the movie was mm. doing well. Oh my um, God. There's a sequel. And there's a sequel. <sighs> Douglas is not in it. Okay. Um, it's more of a Yellowstone style story. So you might actually like the second one better. I like the oh, first shit. one better. Because of the the culturalness of it, the story behind it. If you go in watching this movie and you have no idea, you basically see, you know, yeah, kids, kids, dad dies and the mountain people say, you have no right to live up here. Go down to the low land, earn the right to live up here. Right. So he right. goes down. It's a coming of age story, uh, falls in love. There's a little bit of pro feminism message in there as well. Oh, yeah. This shit was um, woke. True. <laughs> woke true. as fuck. It's, it's it great. Nonsense. Male company. Uh, but it's basically just a, you know, it's a coming of age story. And, you know, the guy gets help from girl. They fall in love. That's, that's basically a story. It's a, it's a adventure romance. Yeah. And I could see how somebody with no notion of its history might initially reject it. This movie is based on a poem yeah, so by A.B. Banjo Patterson, uh, who is probably the most famous author from australia i want to say if he's not the most famous he's definitely the most publicly performed the poem itself is about which is also in the movie a racehorse's colt escapes its paddock goes off joins the brumbies which are wild horses right the character in the poem rides down the mountain to save the horses that's what the poem's about so right. that's what the movie's about right and this right. is a beloved poem from a beloved artist from that country and so much so that A.B. Banjo Patterson is on the Australian $10 bill, and mm. so is part of the poem. A.B. Patterson also wrote a Bush ballad back in the day called, a, what's it called? Uh, Waltzing Matilda, which some consider the unofficial national anthem. Uh, they did a vote for it. It came in like second or third a long time ago. Dusty Slim is a famous Australian country music artist mm. <laughs> who was the first man to be played from space. Oh shit! As oh shit! The Columbia space shuttle flew over Australia in like '82. Mm-hmm. They played "Matilda Waltzing" by Dusty Slim, that was written by AB Banjo Patterson. Right. So this guy's a legend in the country. Yeah. Right. Like the first scenes when we see the the group of horses, I was like, mm-hmm. "Is this gonna be like a a horror western where it's like this group of horses is like." terrorizing people. It's like a this group of horses running around causing a ruckus, which they kind of were, but... Are you referring to the was... horse stock footage that was repeated over and over and over again throughout <laughs> the movie? The silhouetted horses just, like, fucking running? Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Just curious. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, all that stuff is really interesting, and I love that stuff. You know I love that stuff. I fucking rant and rave about it with a lot of old movies, like Halloween, and I'm always talking about, like, the production stuff and how these things came together. Love all that. Just as a movie, though, I don't know. Can't get into it. Couldn't get into it. Yeah. I, I had to stop watching it, actually, because I was... It was the... Damn. I'm so not you didn't even... No, I watched it. I finished finish it. it. I finished oh, okay. it, but I, I'm... And I'm not saying this to be a dick or a joke or make a joke or anything. I was literally falling asleep in my chair, and I had <laughs> to get up and, like, go for a walk because I was, like, dozing off. Who's the...
So I was talking to my buddy George about this because he he knows more about like foreign films than I do. And I was like, did you ever see this movie? He's like, nah, I never heard of it. He was saying how Australian like movies and directors in general, uh, in his words, fuck very hard. <laughs> uh, and he was saying that per capita, they put out like way more banger movies than the US does because they just don't have as big of an industry. So because of that, like it's that like quality versus quantity type of thing. I read a lot of like stuff on the movie after I watched it. Not because it has it has a good rating on IMDb. I won't reveal yeah. what it is yet. And I'm like, this, something's not adding up. <laughs> so a lot of it, I would imagine, has to do with the history and stuff that you were talking about. I'm sure people love the movie. I'm not trying to take that away from anybody. But you know, people are saying like, oh, the cinematography is beautiful. It has an AFI award. It, it has it has an AFI award for best achievement in cinematography and best achievement in sound. Oh right. I don't right. really know what the achievement in the cinematography was. Yeah, of course, the landscapes were beautiful, but the way it was shot was just so goofy and, like, jerky and all over the place that I, like, it took the beauty of it away from me. Like, it, the movie uses a lot Some of, like... Some scenes were jerky, but not all of it was. Uh, When I say jerky, the, there was, like, a lot of very, like, shaky camera stuff going on a lot of the time. Mm. And then when they did show, like, the landscapes, it was, like, wide-angle shots, but, like, they used these, like, really fucking fast and, like, jarring, like... Uh, zoom things and like they did like the they, they used cross dissolves from scene to scene like so often so a lot of the time i was just like all right well the landscapes are fucking beautiful but like uh, it was just it felt like a little bit all over the place to me so i there was like one specific moment that i was like what the fuck is going on here with this because they they showed this like beautiful vista and then all of a sudden they just cut to like the dude with the blonde mustache just like <laughs> smiling that he was just smiling at the whole fucking movie so like some Australian shit, you just wouldn't a, get it. A lot of the cuts and stuff, the cinematography, just to me, made like no sense. The horsemanship in this movie is amazing. Like some of the scenes they shot with these dudes running around on these horses mm -hmm. was amazing. And that yeah. shot where Jim rides down the mountain at the end is actually him riding down a mountain in one single shot. Right. That is impressive. Marvin, what was your favorite scene of this movie? Uh, when Jim got ran over by the horses, I laughed when I shouldn't have. I and laughed that, my that fucking, fucking close ass up on off. the horse afterwards the fucking, just killed dude, me. Dude, the triple <laughs> zoom in great. on the eyeball. <laughs> Literally cracked the fuck up, stopped what I was doing, rewound it, recorded it in OBS to make sure I had it as a clip for the video later. That's and, awesome. Man, and I wrote it that, down. That man got stampeded and just walked it off like Here, it was a scrape on the knee. It was nothing. Here's my note. Horse eye zoom hilarious. Oh, <laughs> well, so fucking funny. In reality, a it horse was. won't run over you. They'll jump over you. Right. That's why... Jumping. Mm. Everybody's getting fucking trampled in this movie, though, dude. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, and I guess you know there was another scene too I thought was really funny towards the end where they were like there was that like huge like horse running sequence, and they crossed the river like randomly. Yeah. There's just a dog swimming in the water that I don't think I've seen a <laughs> dog before unless I just kind of like zoned out. I don't know where this that came random from. shit. Yeah. Well, it's just a bunch of horses leave a ranch. Some of the dogs are gonna follow. That's, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I I um I also so so like again I didn't think the writing was that strong, and then the acting really wasn't that great. But I honestly don't even understand the character arc. Like I get it's like the coming of age thing, and like he got he has to go be but, a man. But how did he become yeah. a man just by like going to gather some horses and bringing them back to the ranch? A. B. Patterson wrote a lot about um the 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 hardness of the bush life and yeah, and yeah. because he he grew up in this area. And he actually helped tame the Brumbies back in the time. And so that's why he did a lot of poetic, poetic writing about it. Mm -hmm. And that's like the um, the stylized version of Western Austra Western Westernized Australia. Like we have Western, you know, U.S., which is John Wayne and yeah. Eastwood and all that. Right. Their stylized is, is, is written down by Banjo Patterson. And like sure. even like Crocodile Dundee and the the character that Hugh Jackman played in Australia dr drove here. He, like these characters are based off the type of man that Banjo Patterson writes about, which is a rugged bushman. Sure. And his story is is he has to earn his right to live on the mountain because it's a dangerous place, and those decisions have consequences no, no. for everybody around. Which you find out in the second movie, but yeah, no, I mean I, I get it. I just didn't feel like there was any real conflict for in which he like would rise from that occasion. It was just like the horses are over there. I got to go get them. And again, I'm sure it's difficult in real life. I just, I don't know that the movie translated it to, for, to me because I 
Well, it's like conquering like fears too. Like, yeah, the horses are what killed his dad. So the whole yeah. time he's trying to, he's kind of yeah. trying to get revenge on these this group of horses, and then he finally like That's you know fair. overcomes them. I also, <laughs> you guys were talking about the score and the score won an award. I didn't think the score was good at all. There was a couple. Oh! There were a couple moments where I was like, "Oh, this is cool!" Like the you know with the music, but it was the placement of it. Editing, editing was the biggest problem <laughs> in this movie. That's what it was. Okay. Because there were moments uh, with the score, I almost felt like I didn't know what this movie wanted to be. Because like for the first half of the movie, there were like these random moments where like '80s and '90s like sitcom music would like swell <laughs> up, like piano music, and then later in the movie. It was like yeah. these grand orchestral performances that would swell up right. when they're like making out and shit. And I was like, what is this? <laughs> what is the placement of this music? It was great. I don't know. I it was great. Oh my God. The I, most epic enjoyed... makeout scene of all time. <laughs> <laughs> There's a trick to that one. There's no trick at all. Let me have a go. Now, like that? Just hand up. I enjoyed the cast in this. What was. Harrison, the Harrison guy's brother, the one, the minor guy, the, old, the older guy. Yeah, that was Spur. Spur. Yeah. I thought he was hilarious. Um, yeah. You know that was the same actor, right, Marvin? Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. I thought he was hilarious. He said a lot. He said yeah. a bunch of funny shit. Tony when Boner. He was messing, like, with the mate. When he was messing with the maid and stuff. It was pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. <well. laughs> yeah. He's not no, real, D- Dusty, not the guy in the bunkhouse reminded me of you. Oh, the, yeah. Uh, the, the, the old the man. That, yeah, he tells him yeah. you did. Yeah, Man can be hard to find in the woods. You're welcome by yeah. my fire anytime. Yeah. The one who was yeah. constantly As soon as I saw him, sleeping. I was like, "Yeah." <laughs> Talking in his sleep. Oh, that was that the one, one that yeah. that was the one that did my favorite. But the thing. one the one that was like cool headed and he was like kind of yeah. sticking up for yeah. Jim mm-hmm. when he first got to the bunkhouse. He was the one yep. at the end was like, who was dusty. like, "He's a man from <laughs> Snowy River." <laughs> Roll credits. Yeah. Yeah. When Spur corrected. The, uh, no, that wasn't the, the rich Harrison guy. He was like, he's not a lad. He's a man. Yeah. yeah. I was like, yeah, I love that shit. Yep. Yep. That's amazing. I was impressed um, though with the fact of how woke the movie was for being an eighties movie. They took every chance yeah. they could get to fucking be like, you know, shut yeah. the stupid men up. This is, well, and this <laughs> is, you know, this is like late 1800s, early 1900s. Yeah. And you know, this is ladies go to lady school and become ladies and marry. Yeah. Rich, yeah. land owning white man, or right. whatever yeah. it is. That shit came yeah. out now. For she some... was, she was against that. She's like, no. She was. And even her, her mm-hmm. aunt, you know, yeah, her aunt was like, yeah. she's got an eye, she got an eye for stock horses and breeding. She knows what the right. fuck she's doing. Like, why are you limiting her talent? If a movie, right. if a movie like this came out now, you'd have fucking uh, Dave Rubin and fucking Matt Walsh on fucking yeah. YouTube talking about how fucking. You know, masculine, attack on men. Yeah, masculinity is dead. <laughs> Fucking stupid assholes. <laughs> it, I kind of wanted the, and I picked this because, uh, for one, it's my birth, it's my birthday month, and so this is one of my favorite western movies of all time. Uh, it doesn't like most people that love westerns have never even heard of this. Some people have, um, but it's a great one because it's an Australian western. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. it's, it tells a good story that anybody can watch. I think. It does. Um, even your kids, uh, I, there's a little bit of language Dude. and a little bit of violence, but right. I mean, what kids are watching these days, uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's my, pretty mild. My, my grandma loves Westerns, and this is one I would love to watch with her. Uh, I think know, she would enjoy this I was a thinking lot. that yep. the whole time, my grandfather, big John Wayne guy, always watching yeah. like Westerns and old movies. He would fucking love this movie. Yeah. yeah. That's I love for John sure. Wayne, too. Uh, uh, I feel like Westerns movies, just have yeah. the infinite replayability value yes they do. something about them i don't just, know just put them on it's just easy going and i just, cannot mm. get into westerns man like i said it's very rare that i like Dude, a this movie has some deep stuff like yeah um harrison's uh spurs they they had that little love triangle going on with yeah uh his, it's about, his wife yeah this yeah it's the story of you know Jim growing up and then, uh, oh my God, I can't even think of her name. Jessica. Yeah. Jesus mm-hmm. Christ. Jessica, uh, <laughs> learning about her family's past and the right. history there of the two brothers warring over the same woman. Right. It's crazy. Yeah. One guy bet on the cult, which is the yeah. rich Harrison guy, and he yeah. got rich, and the other guy's been Early. mining. But been he was gold mining. She, she, it's like she really like, liked him, but it was like, 
whoever has the money gets the girl. Yep. It's sad too because in part two he's dead and like they found gold like a year or two after he died is what they said. And oh, everybody's rich shit. where he has his gold mine was. Oh. Wow. Way to, way to rub it in. But yeah, I mean, this uh, movie went on to spur the careers of some of these actors. Like I said, Tom Burlinson, this is one of his first. Sigrid Thornton, the, the girl who played Jessica, she had already been a successful TV actress and continued mm. for more years after that. Um, Tony Bonner, uh, he played uh, the head the head guy at the, the Cowboy Lodge or whatever. He's in one of my other favorite westerns, Quigley Down Under. Uh, and then Jack Thompson... He's probably the biggest star here. He was in episode two of Star Wars. He was in Broken Arrow, Midnight in the Garden of uh, Good and Evil, The Great Gatsby. Mm. Um, so he's he's an established actor. But, but yeah, it's a fun movie. Huh. I like it. I enjoy it. I kind of wanted to pick nine to five because I wanted to have a woke conversation. A woke conversation. But maybe we'll save that for another time. Damn, oh, that you one want, you want is, the controversy. An, is another ahead of its time. <laughs> the Jane Fonda woke movie? Ass, woke ass movie the jane fonda nine to five yeah yeah um oh, i see i haven't seen this one either yeah don't worry marvin we'll get there eventually you will have seen every movie that has ever existed <laughs> yeah and I'll uh, bet yeah this is a favorite old. western and i want to get it out of the way because it's a cultural film and this is why we do this because yeah, maybe the, okay and to end on it i think the composing is great i love this uh soundtrack i'm glad it got an award it, i think the cinematography <clears> is good is the acting great uh, no, sometimes it's really good. Sometimes it's really poor. Is the writing that great? It's okay. I think this movie is better than the sum of its components because of what it is as far as a story for Australia and the history of Banjo Patterson. And Yeah. No, I can get behind yeah. that stuff. I mean, Bush you know, folklore. To clarify on the score, it wasn't so much the score itself. It was the placement of it is what I found right. goofy as fuck. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so that, that was It was my... nominated for a Golden Globe as well. Uh, except this little-known um, director producer uh, by the name of Richard Attenborough made a little mm. title by the name of Gandhi. Yeah. So did not get the best foreign film Golden Globes out here. That's fair. But it probably would have had old Dicky Attenborough not made that fucking movie. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, Marvin. You have any last things to say about this? Any final thoughts? No. All right. It was well, good. over here on IMDb, it's got some pretty high accolades. It's mm-hmm. uh it's sitting on IMDb at a seven point two. Oh. Um, Marvin, we established a new rule last week. We don't fuck with twos and threes and eights. It's 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 zeros and fives. That's it. Those are the numbers. All right. Oh. So you give the you know if you're gonna give it a seven point two, we're rounding that shit down. Oh, so no, just whole Dusty, numbers. Dusty tried to pull some fucking six point eight shit on me last week. I had to <laughs> shut him down. So. Uh, 6.8 no really it was like 5.8 is what i tried oh my god yeah. so I, I i yeah i gotta give you know listen i understand all those things you said about it and i appreciate those things and i appreciate the movie for its impact on uh australia but uh didn't really work for me so i'm i have to go ahead and give this a five Probably my lowest rating so wow. far. Wow. Yeah, I gotta that's, do. It. That's I, fair. Wow. I can't. I like. It's just, that's not fair. There was just nothing well, about it that's. No, I'm just to kidding. Me. <laughs> I know. Dan I, doesn't <laughs> like westerns, so anytime he grades one critically, I'm going to easily dismiss it because <laughs> he doesn't have any solid standing as far as westerns are concerned. I agree so with you. I won't even argue yeah. whatever he wants. He just uh, this was just more done. for. <laughs> this is just more for you to see if you liked it, and I like it, so I wanted to share. Um, listen, my opinion, my rating means nothing. You're right. Not liking <laughs> westerns has a big is is a big part of it. Ha- if I liked westerns, I might have gone into this more with an open mind. But uh, mm. yeah, you could just you're biased me. from the jump. Not me. I enjoy some of the dialogue. I think okay. it has some cheesy dialogue. So we said no decimals. Is that is that you can do five. five? Yeah, half scale. Well, I'm doing five. a seven point five. I'm doing right. a seven point five right. for that's this baby. Pretty, that's pretty high. Yeah. That's, that's where I, I put like it, it too. I don't know if it's five. good enough. Four and eight. I think okay. a 7.5 is a fair score. A story of triumph. Will you look at that? A story of love. <laughs> a story of a boy who becomes a man. The man from Snowy River. Tell you what, I will say this. The story of it all... Seems interesting. Let the Cohen brothers remake this shit, and then 
<laughs> then come talk to me. <laughs> that, would, that would actually be amazing. Yeah, did you see their yeah. fucking... I would, I would, did you see their their Western? I mean, um, what was they it? They made one? Yeah. Um, it was a remake. It was... Uh, why did, why Shit, is wrong with my that. brain tonight? You're talking about True Grit? True Grit, yeah. That was a good movie. Mm. Yeah. That's, yeah. That was a good one. Better than the original. I like the original better, <laughs> but it was a good remake. Yeah. It's one of the I few... Mean, you can't do better than... This is John Wayne Rooster Cogburn. Don't tell me that it's... I fucking don't like John Wayne movies at all. Oh my God. True Grit, huh? Yeah. There's but, some good uh, ones. Uh, let us know in the comments, folks, if you've seen this movie, what you thought of it. Am I being too critical? If this is your first time here and you like what you watched, consider subscribing. And you can check out the rest of our movie reviews that we do each week on the playlist over there. We will catch you in the next one. See ya. Buster.